With the above definitions, the tasks become simple. We are given two nodes, variable A and variable B, and with the entry A's group ID and A's weight, and the entry B's group ID and B's weight respectively. So to evaluate the query of A divided by B, we only need to perform the following two calculations. If A's group ID is equal to B's group ID, then these two must belong to the same group. Then there must exist a path between them. So if the above condition holds, then we just calculate A's weight divided by B's weight. We just by dividing over the relative weights that are assigned to the variable, then we can obtain the result of A divided by B in the end. So now all of them boil down to how we can build the above table with the help of union find algorithm. Again, let's try to use the same example as we presented before. Let's say we have two equations as our input, namely A divided by B is 2, B divided by C is 3. So initially, the entry for each variable would look like this. Well, the group ID of each variable is the variable itself, and the weight of each variable is 1. So each variable will form a group on its own, since there is no relationship among them at the first moment. Now, if we want to process the equation a divided by b is 2, we can just use the union operation by joining the two groups that variables a and b belong to. Now, we would obtain the results as shown in this graph. So more precisely, we just attach the group of dividend a to one of the divisor b. So meanwhile, we will also update the relative weight of the group a to reflect the ratio between these two variables. Similarly, we we'll continue to process the equation of b divided by c is 3, just using the union operation by joining the groups of b and c together. So similarly, we just attach the group of dividend b to one of the dividers c, so that we can update the weights of the group b to reflect the ratio between these two variables. As one might notice, there is some inconsistency in the above graph. For example, the group ID of the variable A should be C, and the weight of the variable A should be 6 rather than 2. So indeed, these inconsistencies are expected. The magic happened when you invoked find operation on the variable A. Well, the chain reaction would trigger to update the group ID and weight along the chain. Once the lazy evaluation of the find method is triggered, the state of the nodes along the chain would be updated, and eventually they will become consistent. So the mechanism of the update is fairly similar with the depth first search traversal. Now, here are the adaptions that we will do, or more precisely, here are a few behaviors that our customized unified data structure would possess at the end. So first of all, initially, we just try to build a table which contains an entry for each node in the graph with the help of the union find. The entry is defined as key point to the group ID and weight. And for example, initially, we are given a node A. The entry in the table would be like A point to the A and 1. Well, the first A indicates the ID of the node, and the second A indicates the ID of the group that the node belongs to, and the final value 1 indicates the weight of the node. Once we implement the above two functions, we then solve the problem into two steps. The first step, we iterate through each input equations and invoke the union function on each of them in order to build the union find data structure. And the second step, we evaluate the query one by one. So this evaluation is just as intuitive as the first approach, as we just broken down them into the following three cases. The first case, if either of the variable did not appear in the input equation, at that time the query is not valid, so we just return negative 1.0 as the result. In the second case, if both variables are valid, then we just apply the find variable function to obtain the tuple of the group ID and weight for each variable. And if they are not in the same group, then that means there is no chain of the division between them. In that case, we just return negative 1.0 as the result. And in the third case, if both variables are in the same group, then we just simply perform the division between their weights as our result. 
we have to check for each query and find the answer for them. So first, we initialize the empty list called result, which will be used to store the answer for queries. And then, let's go through each query in the list of queries. So for each query, we first check if both dividend and divisor variable have appeared in the equations before. So if either of them has not appeared, then we just append negative 1.0 to the result list. And if the both variable have appeared in the equations, then we just try to find the group ID and the weight for each variable by using the find function. And if the group ID for the dividend and divisor are not the same, it means they are not connected and therefore they can't be divided. So in that case, it also have to append negative 1.0 to the results list. And if the group ID for each variables are the same, then it means they are connected and they have a chain or path between them. So in this case, we just calculate the result of the division by dividing the dividend rate by the divisor rate and append the result to the results list. And then finally, we just return the results list, which containing all of the answer for queries. We create a dictionary GID weight which used to map the variable node to a tuple. The tuple contains the group ID and the weight. The group ID is the identifier to the group that the variable belongs to, and the weight is the relative weight of the variable to the group. For example, if the variable A belongs to the group X and the weight of A is 2, then this means that A is as twice as much X. The GID weight dictionary is used to keep track of the relationship between the variables and is updated as we process the equations and the queries. In the union find data structure, we maintain a state for each variable to keep track of the group that each variable belongs to, as well as the weight and value of each variable in the relation to the group that it belongs to. This is done by using a dictionary GID weight, where the keys are the variables and the values are tuples, which contains the group ID and the weight and the value of each variable in the relationship to the group. So this allows us to efficiently and quickly determine the relationship between different variables and perform the calculations on them. So in the union function, we merge two groups together by attaching the dividend group to one of the divisor and update the GID weight dictionary accordingly. And let's try to define the union x and the y function, which is try to merge the two groups that the two elements x, y belongs to respectively. Let's try to define union function. It takes three parameters, dividend, divisor, and value. So this function first find the group ID and weight of the both dividend and divisor variable by using the find function. And if the group ID of the dividend and divisor are not the same, it means that the two belong to the different group and need to be united. So to do this, the function updates the group ID of the dividend variable to that of the divisor and updates his weight accordingly. This is done by multiplying the divisor's weight by quotient value and uh, dividing it by the dividend weight. And this can ensure that the ratio between the dividend and divisor is respected and it is consistent with the given equation. If they are not already in the same group, then the union function will attach the group of dividend to that of the divisor. In addition, it needs to update the weight of the dividend variable accordingly so that the ratio between the dividend and divisor is respected. So this function is responding for creating a connected between variables and make sure that the ratio between them is consistent. It does this by attaching the group of dividend variable to the group of divisor variable and updating the weight of dividend variable to reflect the quotient provided. So this can ensure when we later evaluate the equation between the dividend and divisor variable, the correct result will obtain. Let's try to define find x function, which is try to get the identity of the group that element x belongs to. Now let's create a function find. It is used to find a group that a variable belongs to. Now let's start by checking if the variable has already been assigned a group. If not, we create a new group for the variable and assign it to a weight of 1. If the variable has already been assigned a group, we just retrieve the group ID and the note weight from the GID weight dictionary. And then we check if the group ID and the node ID are the same. If they are not, it means there are inconsistency in the chain. And then we need to update the state of variable along the chain. 
If we want to do this, we have to call the find function again on the group ID and retrieving the new group ID and group weight, and then we update the GID weight dictionary by setting the node ID to the new group ID by multiplying the node weight by the group weight, and finally, we just return the group ID and the weight of the variable. We update the group ID and the weight of variable in the GID weight dictionary, so the group ID is set to new group ID which is the variable being merged with, and the weight of the variable is also updated by multiplying it with the group weight, which is the weight of the group that the variable is being merged with. So this is done to ensure that the ratio between the variable is maintained. Let's talk about find variable function. This function will return the group ID that variable belongs to, and moreover, this function will also update the state of variable along the chain. So if there are any discrepancy, this means that if the function finds the group ID of the variable does not match the current group ID of the variable, it will update the group ID and the weight of the variable to match the group ID and the weight of the group that a variable belongs to. This is known as lazy updates, as this update is only made when we are needed, right? So rather than updating all of the variables in the groups at once, so this will help us to optimize the performance of this algorithm. Let's analyze the complexity. Since we just applied the union fine data structure in our algorithm, we would like to start with a statement on the time complexity of this data structure. This statement is if we have m operations, either union or find, we just apply them to n elements. So the total runtime is m multiplied by log of n. Well, the log is the iterative logarithm. In our case, the maximum number of elements in the union find data structure is equal to twice of the number of equations. For example, each equation introduced to two new variables. We let n be the number of input equations and let m be the number of queries. First of all, we just iterate through each input equation and invoke union upon it. So as a result, the overall time complexity of this step is all of n multiplied by log n. And the second step, we just evaluate the query one by one. So for each evaluation, we invoke the find function at most twice. So therefore, the overall time complexity of this step is O of m multiplied by log of n. So to sum up, the total time complexity of this algorithm is O of m plus n multiplied by log of n time. As we should notice, that compared with depth first search and breadth first search approach, the union find a data structure is more efficient for the repetitive redundant query scenario. Once we evaluate the query with union find, then all the subsequent repetitive query or any query that has overlapping with the previous query in terms of variable group that can be evaluated in constant time. So for instance, in the above example, once the query of a divided by c is evaluated, then if later we want to evaluate a divided by b, we could instantly obtain the states of variables a and b without triggering any chain update again. Well, in the depth first search or breadth first search approaches, the cost of evaluating each query is independent for each other. The space complexity of our union find data structure is O of n, well, because we maintain a state for each variable, and this is because we use a dictionary, GID weight, to store the group ID and the weight for each variable. So the size of the dictionary is determined by the number of the unique variables in this input, well, which is n. As we add more variable to the dictionary, the space complexity will increase linearly with n. Since the find function is implemented with recursion, there would be some additional memory consumption in the function called stack, which would amount to O of n. Therefore, the overall space complexity is O of n. So in the worst case scenario, where all of the variables are different, and there is no common equations to the group them together. So this is because we need to maintain a state for each variable in the form of dictionary, which has size of n space.